Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Shelly Geigel with JS Hobbies and Crafts and I have another mini album tutorial for you and this is definitely a beginner's album. Over the years I've had several people ask if I could make an album without all the fancy die cutting trims or even the, the Martha Stewart or EK Tools trim punches. So that is what I did today, but I do encourage you to use your dies and your punches in this as it would make it even more beautiful than it came out. Um, oh, I have a little visitor here. Let's see. I have Sissy. Sissy is my newest companion <laughs> in um, the crafting room and she will be joining us today as we make our album. So let's take a look at what's inside and what we will be building today. So we're going to take a look at what we'll be making today. This is an eight and a half by six and a half mini album with a three and a half inch spine. And I used the 49th and Market Flowers. And in the materials list, I will tell you which ones I use. But I also used uh, Valerie's Butterflies. Uh, Valerie uh, used to work for JS Hobbies. She has a couple tutorials on my channel. Uh, however, she does not work for me anymore. And so she kind of ventured off and opened her own little Etsy store and created these beautiful butterflies. She also does jewelry and other uh, beautiful uh, crafty creations. You gotta check it out. Um, her link uh, is in the description area underneath this video. So let's just take a look at what we got here. Uh, this is the Stamperia Shabby Rose paper collection and it is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so let's open up and take a look. Again, this is uh, strictly uh, for a beginner. However, uh, if you want to use your trim dies, um, your your fancy punches, oh, I, I, I think that this would even look even more beautiful if you did that. So, okay, so beginners, this is something easy. We don't have any uh, specialty trim cuts or anything. Here is a pocket, and we have a couple picture mats in there. Over here, we have a magnetic fold out, and it folds out again. And we have a pocket, and we have a small pocket here, some picture mats, and I also made a little folder in here. Okay. Going on to page three, we have a envelope here that you can stash some picture, picture mats in. And we also have a place to put pictures behind it. Over here, we left that alone so that you can just plant a nice picture in here. Okay. Here what we have is a tag that you can write on, but it's also a, a little front pocket. And I've created another little folder. We have a large generous pocket back here with some picture mats. And also over here. Here we have a belly band and we're able to stack several things in here. I got uh, several different things. I also have another envelope, tags, and we actually we actually make uh, a couple picture mats uh, when we get to this page and this folder. And over here, what we have is a large fold out, but we also have a magnetic little flip so you can plant some photos or journal and we're going to fold that out and we have a very large side pocket for larger photos and you can just plant a photo right here if you'd like also this features on the side of the fold out a pocket so that you can slide in and out 
more photos. This page, we just have two side pockets. This is like the perfect uh, beginner uh, mini album. If you're looking for the straight edge just to get a hang on how to make some pockets, how to do flips and folds, this is just wonderful to, to use as a guide. Alrighty, we're going to move on to the next page. And this next page I left alone so that you can just plant your photos and do some plant uh, a tag. There are leftover papers and I'll show you what I had left over after creating all these picture mats in just a moment. Okay, we come to the final page and this is a magnetic and it flips up. And we have a pocket up here. And we have a flip down and this will store free floating picture mats in there as you can see. And over here is a pocket to finish off the album. So there is a lot of storage and a lot of places that you can put photos in this. Okay, so what I had left over after doing the picture mats that you saw was I had a lot of goodies here that I could have cut out. There's tags, a lot of things that there's still some good papers in here. Nice size. And we had one, two, three full sheets left over. Alrighty, let's go on to the materials list. Materials list. So the main ingredients is Stamperia Shabby Rose Paper Pack and there are 10 double-sided sheets in here that are just absolutely gorgeous for our album. Look at that beautiful print. And I can't wait to get my hands on this. Uh, there's only 10 um, double-sided sheets per pack and so we're going to need two of these which will give us 20 sheets to play with. The next thing that we're going to need is two pieces of 12 by 12 medium weight black chipboard. And we'll be cutting these down to size. I'm going to be using the Coordinations Premium Black Cat cardstock, and this is the 8.5 by 11 value pack. So I'll be using that. Tyvek. We're going to need a couple strips of Tyvek. Now Tyvek, um, I'm using it, it's an envelope. Um, all we do is cut a couple strips, but what this is is a very durable uh, material. And we use this in the binding so that our album does not fall apart later on. Now as I mentioned, I'm not going to be using any die cut flowers, any die cut trim or punch trim, but you are more than welcome to do that. It would really add a lot of uh, elegance to this album. And if you do want to use your own punches or die trim dies, um, I'll help you get started once we hit page one. Uh, flowers. I'm going to use these two flower packs and they are the 49th and Market. And these are called the Seaside Blooms. And this one is Natural Blush. It's a pink. And then these are the 49th Market Garden Seeds. And it's cotton. And cotton is just a white, various uh, flowers in here. And there are some leaves for us to use. Any white flower or pink flower of your choice will work. So check your stash. I will be using bling on the roll and what this is is a single strand and they look like little rhinestones and this will just dress up our album. It's very inexpensive. So in this tutorial you're going to need about 10 craft magnets and I use these and they're very strong. They're about 3 8 inch uh, wide and about a sixteenth of an inch thick so they work really good and they're super strong. So one 10 pack of these will work. Flat back pearls, I will be using them. Uh, these are about 7 sixteenths of an inch wide and these are ivory fancy. 
and just one pack will do you. If you have uh, maybe a handful at your house already, use what you have to save some money. I'm also going to be using a two pack and these are just kind of like a pearl rhinestone cluster and we'll just need one of these and it's to cover our Dritz closure. These are really pretty on the back. They look like this. I think you can see that. For our side closure, I am going to be using the Dritz Extra Large Hook and Eye. And this is black brass. And there are three pairs in this, so we only need one pair. So you'll have a couple more for another project. Okay, so I'm going to be using some lace. And this is a really pretty lace applique. And um, uh, you will need one of those or not. It depends if you want to use it or not. Now, I'm going to use a some uh, variety of lace, so check your stash. Um, I have approximately one yard of this. And these are just called the um, 2 and 1 8 rayon venice lace dotted flower. It's really pretty. And this is the stretch galoon, and this is one and one eighth inch, and it does stretch. And there's about a yard here. And then um, about a yard of the half inch flat brochelle lace. So you might want to grab um, some maybe an eighth inch uh, wide white lace or the color of your choice. Okay, now this is wider and this is a little more expensive than normal ribbon. There's about 10 yards on this. This is the Tim Holtz crinkle ribbon and um, it does crinkle. Now you can mist it to crinkle it up or you can just do it dry. I do mine dry. I take some off and I'll crinkle it up to make a crinkly looking um, bow or um, something along that nature. So you won't need all 10 yards. Maybe we'll use about a yard of this or less. For my spine, I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Baroque Frames. Now you get two per pack and um, I am for sure going to be using one on the spine and I may use one inside the album. I haven't decided yet. So you will want a pack of these and they are inexpensive. Adhesives. You're probably going to need a couple rows, uh, rolls of quarter inch score tape. And um, I'm going to be using Art Glitter Designer Dries Clear Adhesive Glue. And I also have the metal tip on it. And this glue is perfect. It does not have any glitter in it. Um, it uh, will attach uh, metal, resins, wood, paper without leaving a greasy residue. It is very strong. And the reason why we use the tip is to control the flow that we use because you don't need that much glue. Okay, so um, butterflies. I'm using butterfly em embellishments by Darling Art by Valerie. And I do not sell these in my store. Um, I will provide the link underneath the video in the description area for you to click on to go directly to her Etsy store to purchase these. But let me show you what I'm using here. On this one, as you can see, look how lovely. That blends in perfectly with our paper collection. And this item number is 111, and it looks like FS. Oop. That is my new little puppy. And it looks like I'm going to have to take a quick break, and I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Okay, um, the next one I'll be using, and there is three per package, and you probably will have some leftover for another project. Just keep that in mind. Um, these are just beautiful, too, and the pink blends in perfectly with the paper collection. And the item number is 104FS. It's a pink marble gold. And then we have these. They are the same exact uh, shape. However, they are different colors. And um, this one has a beautiful multicolor center with the, looks like the, they're pinkish colored um, metal antennas. And this is 111 and in parentheses, she has MS. And then this one with the gold centers. And this is 104 MS, pink marble gold. 
and these are absolutely gorgeous and they are really good quality. So I've got one out of the package here just so you can see it just a little better. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Alrighty, we are done with our materials list. Um, a few things that you may want um, in this tutorial for tools is you will want a pencil with an eraser. You will want a pair of scissors. You may need your craft knife. I use mine with my score tape to help me get the adhesive backing off. You'll want a scoring board and your tool, as well as a paper cutter. So one thing that you may want to get is my DBS Designs by Shelly JS Hobbies and Crafts Specialty Ruler. This is an easy read ruler. Um, in this tutorial, I will be giving measurements as we go so we know where to cut. Uh, for example, if you need 7 and 1 8, it will. you can just look over here and you will find it. Um, this is clear, so it's probably hard for you to see, so I'm going to place this right on up here so you can see what I'm talking about. All the measurements are spelled out with the notches next to it. This ruler also has a beginning point, a zero. So when you're lining up, you line up right there to get an accurate measurement. And all of these are, all of the materials other than the butterflies are available in my store for purchase. Let's start building our album. So we're going to start off by cutting down our chipboard uh, to get it to eight and a half by six and a half, and also we'll be cutting for our spine piece. So I like to stay consistent on how I tell you to measure over. I usually start from the left and tell you to measure on over to the right. So on both of these pieces of chipboard, we're going to measure over eight and a half inches and cut. So I want to demonstrate several ways you can achieve your cut on medium weight chipboard. It is um, stronger than lightweight chipboard and it's not always easy to cut. So if you are using one of these uh, type of uh, cutters, um, one thing you'll want to know is that chipboard does dull your blade. But I'm going to demonstrate here how to go about it. And I got a blade right here. I actually keep um, two different blades. One is marked uh, chipboard C and the other one I, I leave alone. I got paint on me. I was painting this morning. Okay. Um, so it's a good idea to, if you're going to be cutting your chipboard like this, to mark one for chipboard and then the other ones for your paper. So all you're going to do is bring it to eight and a half inches, okay? You're going to do, I don't think I got my blade in here correct, there we go. Okay, so we're going to get it at eight and a half inches. Now what you're going to want to do is do one stroke up. You're not going to go back and forth. So I'm going to do one stroke up. Uh, like this, as you can see, it almost gets through. So now you're going to turn it over, measure it back up to eight and a half, and you're going to run this back down. This will release that chipboard for you. So that's one way to do it if you're working with a cutter like this. Okay. Um, recently, um, I was cutting mine with a heavy duty um, type of paper cutter and I did come across this. I've, I've tried out several guillotine type. This is the Westcott Carbo Titanium and the blade does not dull and I found that this uh, is the only one that I've found that it actually cuts through medium chipboard like butter as well as heavyweight. Okay, so right now I measured over eight and a half inches and I cut this. I'm going to set this to the side and I'm going to demonstrate on this one. Okay, now I do sell this in my store. 
Um, I do not ship it internationally because it does have the blade and whatnot. Um, it does have a uh, clip so to keep it down for child safety. However, if you have a small child in the house, uh, it would be very easy for them to twist this, bring it up, and lop their fingers off. So um, for me, if I had my grandchildren over and it was not put away, I would get some um, like plastic twist tie, or not twist tie, the zip ties, and zip it down so this could not um, be released. Okay, so this. Um, as I was saying, I do sell this in my store. It is not on my website um, because it is a very large box and it's heavy. However, if you are interested in this, um, you can call into the hobby store and get a shipping quote for it. Okay, but we are not shipping these uh, internationally. Okay, so eight and a half inches, I am lined up, and that's how easy it is. Okay, so what we have here so far is two large pieces like this, and we have one of these. One of these you can set off to the side for another project. Okay. We're going to set this off to the side because we will be cutting it. Okay, so now on both of these pieces, we're going to turn them. And we're going to measure over six and a half inches and cut on each one of these. And there's my front piece to my album cover. So I'm going to set that off to the side. This piece here, save for another album. You'll have a smaller album, but it's perfectly good. So I'm going to set that off to the side for another project. This one, I'm going to do the same thing. Six and a half inches. The smaller piece is for another album, another project. Here's our back cover. Now remember this piece I told you to set off to the side. Okay, next thing we're going to do is measure over eight and a half inches and cut. This small piece you can use for another project. Okay, we are done cutting our chipboard and I'm going to move this out of the way. So let's take a look at what we have. We have our middle spine piece which is three and a half inches by eight and a half inches. We have our front and back covers. This is eight and a half inches by six and a half, eight and a half by six and a half. Now with binding, the way I bind mine is different than a lot of people. Um, when binding on a lot of people, they will leave a space in between. However, with my technique, you do not need to. We will actually end up butting these right up next to each other and it will still open for us. However, what I want to do now is I want to wrap the edges so they're nice uh, with cardstock. So let's grab some cardstock and we will cut it. Okay, grab two pieces of cardstock. We are all, and I'm going to double mine up. We are already eight and a half inches this way. That's perfect. That's what we need. Now, this way, we are going to measure over. 10 and a half inches and cut. Okay, set these off to the side. Let's grab another piece of cardstock. We're going to fix this and to look at it like this. Our first cut is going to be, we're going to measure over five and a half inches and cut. Now, one thing that we're going to do is we are going to make a pile out of the way with leftover cardstock. And this is called our reserve pile or our scrap pile. So this, let's put in our reserve pile. Reserve pile is just something that we can grab at to save from cutting into new paper. So it's handy for us. Okay, looking at it like this, let's measure over 10 and a half inches and cut. And this is what we should have. Let's start with our spine piece, which is perfectly fine, and this is what I like to do. You should have an inch on each side of, of cardstock, and what this is going to do is be our wrap over. 
Now some of you that have taken a lot of my tutorials, uh, this may be a lot slower for you, um, but this is for a beginner, uh, somebody who um, will need a little bit slower instruction. And then as we get going, we will pick up the pace. So once you have your chipboard spine centered in the middle of your cardstock, let's just do something. Let's just wrap over, hold it down, and you don't have to be perfect on the one inch. Get it approximately. And we're just going to crease around this. And this is going to help us when we place this. So that's all we need to do for now. Okay? Let's set this off to the side and we're going to do the same exact thing for our front and back cover. We're going to center this so we have approximately one inch overhang on each side and we're going to hold it down with our hand and we're just going to bring in those sides to give it a nice crease and that will help us when placing these when it's time to add our score tape. Okay. Next, we'll grab our final piece. Do the same thing. Just kind of wrap it around. Now this is a completely, like I said, different way from when to wrap your albums. I like doing it this way. To me it looks a lot cleaner and there's less chance for the outside of your album on the edges um, ever poking in and destroying the outside. So okay, we've got this going here. Let's work on wrapping. And one thing is, is if you've taken my tutorials before, um, one thing you're not going to do is is um, if you're going to jump ahead, do not glue down uh, the top or the bottom. We're just going to be moving in on the sides. Let's get into our score tape. We will be mitering the edges, but for now, let's get this in place and get our score tape down. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start laying this. And I'm going to wrap my edges. You don't have to do it this way. You can just go along the edges of your chipboard and then just tear it off and then go around. Okay, because this is going to be flipping down on there, we're going to make sure we have enough score tape down so that our paper uh, does not buckle up on us. So we're going to lay about three pieces here on either side and then we're going to put one right next to that other one. So let's lay three spaced out and then one right next to the other. Perfect. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to tell you before I do it, is I'm going to remove the score tape. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this down right on that so it adheres. So let's start removing our score tape and this is a good time to get out your craft knife because it does help to get the backing off that score tape to lift it as you can see. So let's get all of this off and we'll place it together. I've got the score tape backing off here and um, a quick tip. If you are working with score tape like I am you definitely want to wash your hands with soap and water and dry them off really good to get all the oils, any lotions off your skin. Because what happens is it's almost impossible to keep your fingers out of the stickiness. And if you have that on your hands, it definitely will take the potency off the double-sided tape. It's kind of like uh, with scotch tape. The more your fingers touch it, the less potent it becomes. Alrighty, so I'm going to place this as best I can. Now, if you get it a little bit off, it's not the end of the world. So we're just going to place that. And then what we're going to do is bring these back on top, making sure. Because if you got this a little bit off from what you originally did, you can just run your fingers and rewrap it like that. Okay? That was just a starting point for us to get this down and make sure that that's gonna work and it does. Let's flip it over and make sure that this is down really good. 
Alrighty, we will be mitering the edges. However, however, let's get started here. Let's run a piece of our score tape around the edge of our chipboard. Okay. The next thing we're going to do, whoop, there's puppy wanting to play. Next thing we're going to do is put a piece of score tape around the outside edges. And then I think we're going to miter the edges after we lay this. It might be a little easier for everyone. Now, if this is your first time working with score tape, it will kind of uh, feel different. Um, you may not even like it. Um, first time I worked with score tape, it was difficult for me to handle. Um, it took some getting used to. And now uh, I don't make an album without it. We are just lining another piece now. Like so. Okay, let's get our scissors out. Alright, to miter the edges, what we're going to do is you will find the edge of your chipboard right here. Okay, what we're going to do is cut a imaginary line straight across. And I am going to grab a pencil so you can see. Right here is, and I'm going to bring it up, right here is the edge of my chipboard. I'm going to leave about one eighth inch between the edge of my corner of my chipboard and on here. And this is where my imaginary line is going to be cut. I'll bring it up and I think you can see that. So now I'm just going to cut at an angle like so. And I'm going to be doing that for each side. Leaving about an eighth of an inch there and cutting. Okay we can actually put these in the garbage. We won't be using those. So we're not going to be taking the score tape off the top top or bottom right now. It's just going to be folding in the inside. So let's remove the score tape backing from the sides. We'll start with this side. Now one thing you may have to do is over here on this bottom you, uh, score tape that's for the bottom, you might have to pull that back. Don't cut it off, just bend it back out of the way. Okay. So now all we have to do is push this over and smooth it down. And then we're going to push that right back over to cover the score tape for now. So that's what you should have. We're going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it over. Make sure that's down. So that's what yours should look like. We're going to do the same exact thing with this one. So the first thing we're going to do is put score tape around the outside like a picture frame one down the middle, and then we will space out three, one, two, three, and we will also line another piece right next to the sides over here. To the left of the center one you just laid, we're going to space out three, one, two, three, and then we will lay one right next to the edge piece. So let's do that. And this is what we should have. Let's lift off the backing from that score tape and we're going to do the same thing we did before. Just placing this where it needs to go. Centered. And then we will make sure that our edges wrap around nicely. Then what we're going to do is flip it over and smooth that down. Make sure that score tape makes contact with our paper. So let's get started. Okay, I got mine down. Make sure it's down really good. And my edges will wrap around nicely, make sure. Okay, our next step. We're going to line score tape along the edge of that chipboard. Next, we're going to lay our score tape around the outside of our cardstock, right along the edge, and then we'll place one in the middle all the way around. It's time to miter the edges. Remember, 
1 8 inch out from the edge approximately Whoops. and I'm a little more than an eighth it looks like there we go and we'll do this going all the way around okay we can toss these in the garbage again we will not be releasing the top or the bottom we're just going to do the sides so let's remove the backing from this side remember to pull these back but don't take them off okay it is time let's wrap these around and then we're going to smooth it out we're going to do the same thing for this let's set this off to the side and grab our spine piece now for placement of the score tape on the spine you don't need as much um, so we are going to go around the edges of the chipboard like a picture frame all the way around to start. We're going to place one down the center and two on each side. A oh, puppy needs to go outside. <laughs> okay, I've got to let her out. She's in the potty potty training stage, but what we're going to do is remove the backing and place it down. Okay, so I've got mine down. Make sure it's down really good. Now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to place a piece of score tape along that outer edge of our chipboard. Then we're going to line the outside and then the inside with our score tape. Let's miter the edges and we're going to do it the same way we did before. Okay, these can go in the trash. Alrighty, we can release the side ones only and then we're going to fold them over. So this is what you should have so far. Let's just stick these right off to the side for now. We're going to get into our Tyvek. Cut two pieces of your Tyvek strips that are one and a half inches wide and eight and a half inches long. Grab your scoring board and we are one and a half inches wide. At three quarters of an inch we're going to score. Now Tyvek likes to wiggle and move so just do it the best you can. This is just a guide to help us to get started. Okay, so once you have that, let's just fold on our score line there. And if you did not get it exact, that's okay. Just do the best you can. We're going to flip these over and the peak is going to be facing up. Let's get our score tape out. Okay, this part of the way that we are binding our album, this part is very important. We're going to lay a piece of score tape to the right of that peak, to the right of our score line. So you do not want to get your score tape on that score line. So just to the right of it, just lay a piece and bring it all the way down. Then we're going to go to the right outer edge and we'll lay another piece of score tape. To the left of that peak, we're going to lay a piece of score tape. And we're going to do the same thing we just did. So very important, if you have score tape peeking over the edges, you definitely want to get that off. Trim it up. So we're going to do the exact same thing for this one. I've got my score tape down and now I'm going to trim off any overhang of score tape. We are ready to go with this. Let's grab our spine piece. Now is the time on the chipboard here you can remove the backing. Now on this you're going to release one side of the score tape backing and you'll leave this side on. Alrighty, so this is where we're at. We have the score tape backing still on one side and the sticky part down. Now we're going to start over here and we're going to pinch that so the peak is right here. 
We're going to line this up right at the edge of our spine and to the top of where our chipboard is. And we're just going to pull it down so it's right at the edge there, all the way down. And we can open that up and push it down. If you get any wrinkles, that's okay. We're not going to be able to see that. We're going to do the same thing over here. Let's release one side of that score tape backing. Let's pinch that. Now our peak is on this side. And we're going to line it up with the top of our chipboard and to the edge. Bring that peak right to the edge of that chipboard. Okay? We'll open it up and press it down. Now it's time to grab our other pieces. So let's start with this one. We're going to now remove off the chipboard And now we can remove the score tape backing off this. Trying to keep our fingers out of it, but like I said, it's an almost impossible. Okay, here's the trick. What you want to do is you can hold that back. You're going to butt your pieces up right against each other. Make sure that your chipboard bottoms and top are even. Okay, and I think mine is. So once you have it there, hold it down and press it over. Just like that. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Remove that score tape from the chipboard. Remove the backing off the side of your type X. And we're going to butt these up, making sure that our chipboard lines up with the other one. Once it's in place, just pull it right on over. Okay? You should be able to do that. Alrighty. Let's just set this off to the side, make sure nothing gets on your stickies. And we're going to get into our cardstock. Okay. We are eight and a half inches this way we're good we're gonna measure over two inches and cut and then we'll measure over again two inches and cut so we will have two strips that are two inches wide by eight and a half inches long stick the larger leftover piece in your reserves let's grab our scoring board now here is a tip when scoring uh, cardstock or whatever you're working with um, if you are working with a new tool, sometimes they are sh very sharp or have a jagged plastic little piece at the tip. Okay, with any scoring tool, you do not want to press down hard to cut through your cardstock. So at the one, we are two inches across. At one inch, we're going to score. If you feel that your scoring tool has cut through, you will want to cut a brand new strip. So we're going to do that on this. We're two inches across. At one inch, we're going to score. And it doesn't, on 65 pound paper, it does not take uh, a whole lot of pressure. It's a real soft scoring, just enough so that you can fold them easily. We're going to flip these over to where the peak is up. Let's grab our score tape. Now, this is important. Um, we have a peak, and we're going to do this the same way we did our Tyvek. To the right of that score line, we're going to lay a piece of card or lay a piece of score tape. We're then going to go to the outside edge, and we'll lay a piece of score tape. We are going to lay one in between. And we're going to do the same thing here. To the left of that score line, we will lay our score tape, making sure we don't get it on there, to the outer edge, and then one down in between. We're going to do this to both pieces. And then what we're going to do is flip it over. Any score tape that is peeking over, we are definitely going to trim off. So let's get our other piece ready. OK, 
Okay, I got both of mine. Let's grab this. And we're going to do this the same way we did the Tyvek. So I'm going to release one side. All right, so I have half of it released, the backing. And I'm going to pinch it. The peak is going out this way. Now this time, I can see where that crease is on my Tyvek. I'm going to bring it up to the top of my chipboard and line up that peak with, with the score line of my Tyvek. And then I'm going to press it down. I can now release this side and press it on over. We're going to do the same thing on this, and we'll do it together. Releasing one side, the peak going this way. I'm going to line it up with the top of my chipboard. The peak is right there, lined up with that score line. Press it down, and now I can release this side. Fold it over. Okay, we are good to go here. We can release the score tape from the top. Okay, you can push your nail in right there on the sides to kind of tuck that in. And now we're going to fold this over. And that's what you should have. Let's do it down here. We're good down here. And we will fold this up and over. Okay. I'm going to do this side up here. I'm going to use my nail to go right there to kind of tuck that down those places and I'm going to roll that over. Push my nail there, push my nail there. I'm going to wrap this up. Okay, the top and the bottom, same thing. Remove that backing and roll it on over. And roll it up. So this is what you should have, a very clean looking album. Now on the outside you will see this, but that's okay. Don't worry about it but it is a nice clean looking album here. We will get to this in just a moment. Let's go ahead and cut for our inside pages. Cut six pieces of cardstock that are eight and a quarter by six and three quarters inch. Once you have all six of these, we're going to lay this down on our scoring board. We are six and three quarters inch across. We're going to score each one at six and a quarter. Okay, so I have all six of mine done and I fold on that score line. I'm just going to lay it down to where the peak is up. And I'm going to lay two pieces of score tape right on that. And the biggest tip for this, it's very important that you do not get score tape on the peak. So just to the right of it, we will lay our score tape. And if you notice, there's just quite not enough room to get a second piece of quarter inch score tape down. Overlap it. We definitely want that. And bring it to the edge. Okay, we're going to do this on all six. Once you are done laying your score tape, you're definitely going to flip it over and trim off any score tape that you see peeking over the edge. We definitely don't want that. Okay, let's lay our score tape on each one of these. I've got all six of mine down. Now one thing um, we're definitely going to want to do is grab your scoring tool, your bone folder. Grab a scratch piece out of your reserve, lay it down over the score tape, and I want you to run that down. Make sure that score tape is down really good. It's time to install our pages, and these are our little hinge flaps. So the idea is we are eight and a half inches tall, 
This is eight and a quarter. So we are going to be placing this right up against where the crease is in between the top and the bottom. So if you grab your ruler and you measure up from the bottom about an eighth of an inch, place a pencil mark, and just place it there. Then you can look up above to make sure that you are even and it looks okay. Okay? All right, so I'm going to show you the first one. And we'll do a few of these together. It is very simple doing it this way because they just all line up right after you place the first one. So long as your scoring um, was uh, done correctly. Okay, so I have my little pencil mark and I have this. So I'm just going to place this, making sure I don't go over. And I'm going to press down here. So I'm down. I'm going to bring it up to the top, making sure it's straight all the way up. And I'm going to press. Now I'm just going to smooth this out. Okay, there's my first sheet. My second one will fall in line. When I remove this, all I'm going to do is line up the top and the bottom and press it up against this, this page and place it. Let's do that. Okay, here we go. I'm going to line the top and I'm going to turn it. So maybe it might be easier. It's easier for me. The top and the bottom gets pushed up against, like so. Once it's down, now I can smooth it down. And we'll go back and smooth it down using that piece of cardstock and running our thing down. So now it should line up with your other one down here by doing it that way. Let's continue on. We'll lay this one and then we'll just go run and right ahead and keep going on with these. But I think it's important that you get to see how this is done. At least doing a few together and then we can all do it. It's the same idea all the way through. Okay, I'm going to line up the top and the bottom. Once I see that it's down, press and they line up. If you get yours on a little crooked, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world, especially if this is your first one. The chances are nobody's going to notice that except you. And by the time we're done getting our decorative paper down and all, all that other stuff, you're not even going to notice it by the time you're done making this album. So we're just going to line up again and press. Okay, let's continue on placing this one and this one. Okay, I got my last one down. Grab your piece of cardstock there. Lay it down over your hinge. And we can use this part. And we're just going to rub it on the hinge there and make sure it's down good. And if you'd rather use the tip, you can do that too. And we'll do that with each one. Alrighty, so this is what you should have when looking at it. It is time to move on to decorating our album. So we're ready to start decorating our cover. Um, but what we want to do first off is there's 10 sheets per pad. And we are going to be using the cover um, as well. So the first thing I want us to do is organize our sheets. So uh, since there's only 10 in here, we're going to tear off each sheet, including the cover. And we're going to keep that as well as the back cover in case we can use some of this for some trim. So we're going to remove each piece from our paper pad and then what we're going to do is place it in the other one with its mate. 
So let's take a moment removing these and slide them, sliding them in. Okay, so I have all mine in here and then I also have a cover and the back. And I'm just going to keep this all together. Remember, after we cut and there's any leftover pieces, we're going to keep them all until the end of the project and we will put them in our reserve or scrap pile. Let's begin. In our paper pack, we will find this beautiful print. On the back, it looks like this. Our first cut is we're going to measure over six and a quarter inch and cut. For now, stick the smaller piece in our reserves. Looking at your paper like this, we're going to measure over eight and a quarter inch and cut. Let's stick this in our reserves. Let's set this off to the side. Cut two pieces of your black cardstock that are two inches wide by eight and a half inches tall. Then let's get our scoring board. Okay, this is what is going to cover up this. And it's also going to leave us so that when this is down over, it will still allow us to have a beautiful black border around our base sheet. So on our scoring board, let's place this down. We are two inches across and we are going to lightly score each one at one inch. Let's fold. And what we're going to do is flip these over. Let's grab our album. Now what I want you to do on this is lay a piece. You see where our seam is and you see where the edge of our chipboard is? We're just going to lay a piece of score tape right along that edge there and we're going to lay a piece on this edge just like that. And we're going to do that on this side too. We should just take care of this right here along the edge making sure you do not get it in the um, in the nook there. All right, so we got that. We're going to grab our piece and the peak is up right now. So we're going to just lay two strips right on the outer edge right next to each other and you can put a little bit of space in between. About an, maybe an eighth of an inch. And then on this edge we're going to do the same and then one next to it leaving a little bit of a space. Let's do the same on this one. Alrighty. So what we're going to do is first work on this. And we can just push it down. It won't hurt anything. Um, some people like it to where their album is very flexible because it's easy to open, shut, and whatnot. I like mine a little bit stiffer. So that's the way we're going to do this and this is what's going to help. We're going to release one side of the score tape on one of these little hinges here. Okay. And we're going to release on this side as well. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to line up the top and the peak is heading this way. I'm going to line this up right at the edge and at the top here and bring it down straight right along that edge all the way down. Okay, and then I'll just flatten it out like that. So this is what you should still be able to see your white tie back through there. All right, let's release the score tape backing off these and this will help stiffen up our album in the spine. If you don't like that, you don't have to do this, but I like mine a little stiffer. Okay, here's the trick. You cannot fold this over while it's laying flat or your album will not uh, open and shut. So stand your album up, put your hand on the top, and what you're going to do is push this over, okay? But you definitely want to make sure that when you do this, you have both sides straight out. So I am going to attempt to show you this, holding this like this, but it's easier for you to have control by 
pressure down and then pushing in on the sides. But I'm going to show you this. Okay, so if my album is like that, all we're going to do is press it over from the and then smooth up and smooth down. So now you should have a nice seam. Okay, and you will notice that now your album's a little stiffer. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here. Take one side off, we'll take another side off. Now remember, your peak is now this way. So I'm going to line it up, make sure that that is right at the edge of my chipboard, the peak, and I'm going to bring it down. Okay, then I can smooth it out. Now I can release the backing off this, and then I'm going to wrap it the same way. Um, I used to teach it a little bit differently, especially on like um, doing a spine piece, a spine cover. I found that it is a little bit easier if you kind of work in putting the score tape down against um, this first. It seems to be a lot easier. So I have my album up the way it's supposed to be, and I think you can see this. It's straight the front back cover and now I'm just going to push this over and smooth up and down. Now your album you should feel that it's not as easy to open and shut. So right now what you want to do is grab your papers, your pages, split it, and then put it down. You're not going to hurt your album like this. This is just so you can run your fingers to make sure that that score tape is down and you can get these to straighten up. Okay, so there it is. All right, so what we're going to do is we're gonna make sure that the writing on this print is the way um, correct and it's not upside down. So this is gonna be my front cover and the idea of this is to have a black border all the way around and it really makes those colors pop. Okay, let's get our score tape out, flip it over. We're going to apply score tape around the outside edges like a picture frame to start. So this is what we should have. We're going to go one down the center. We're going to put one on either side next to the other because of our drits. And in case we get turned around, we don't have to worry about it. So we'll put one here. You're going to place two pieces of your score tape on either side of that middle. I got my middle a little off. So by the time we're done here, you're going to have score tape with a spacing in between. So I got the score tape all over the back and it's time to remove it and place this, re again, make sure that you are not placing it upside down. Um, make sure the print is upright. And when we place this, we are gonna place this center so that we have a black border all the way around. And you should have about 1 8 inch border. And I'm gonna show you how I get that centered. So I'm gonna remove the backing. I've got the score tape backing off and I'm gonna take my album and I'm gonna look at it like this. This is easier for me, I don't know about you. But I am just going to make sure that I have even spacing top sides. If you need to use a ruler to help you, then do so. Okay, once we have that down, we really wanna make sure that we press that score tape down. Remember, this is our cover, and we are gonna have embellishment, so we don't want any buckling of the paper. But that looks beautiful to me. I think that black around there really makes that pink and those lighter colors pop. Okay, set this off to the side. We're gonna cut for our back. In your paper pack, you will find another one of these sheets. We're going to measure over six and a quarter inches and cut. Put the small piece in our reserves. Let's turn it. 
measure over eight and a quarter inches and cut. Put the smaller piece in your reserves. And we are gonna flip this over and apply score tape. Let's place our score tape around the outside like a picture frame and one down the middle to start. So let's just put one on either side. Let's put one on the edge next to this. And I think we'll go right here. Alrighty, so what we're going to want to do is looking at your album like this, make sure that you have it the right side so that you're looking at it. And we're just going to flip it over this way. And the reason why I do that is so that you do not get your print upside down. It's very easy when working with the light print that has writing in the background to get it planted upside down. So, remove the score tape and we're going to do the same thing we did before is planting this center and smoothing it down. So let's do that. I got mine on. Now what I'm going to do is split my album right down and I'm going to lay this down flat. In your paper pack you will find this sheet on the back it has some really pretty writing on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this so it is upside down. The butterfly is down here and we're going to measure over three and a half inches and cut. Stick this in your reserves. Alrighty. So looking at it like this, we're going to measure over eight and a quarter inches and cut. Stick this in our reserves. Now what I want you to do is place this down and make sure that you fit in between any grooves that you have. Okay, It's going to fit there so that it is centered. You'll have black on each side. Once you know it's a good fit, let's flip it over. We're going to apply score tape around the outside like a picture frame. Okie doke. One down the center and we're going to put one on either side of that. And that should be plenty for what we're doing. Make sure that your score tape is down really good. Now we're going to remove the score tape backing and we are going to center this in between those two little hinge marks, but we're also going to line it up with the top and bottom of our other pages. So I'll show you in just a moment as soon as I get my backing off. Got the backing off, making sure my writing is the correct way. And I am going to line that up as best I can with the top and the bottom and place it, making sure that I press down around those edges really good. In your reserves you will have this small, it's like a 4 by 6 or a little less. On the back it's pink. Get out one of your Tim Holtz Baroque frames. And what we're going to do is come right down here in the lower corner where we can get those roses, making sure that our piece comes down enough behind. Okay? What I like to do at this point is hold it really good and then I just cut back and behind and around, just like that, okay? So now I have this. I'm going to stick this back in my reserves and I'm going to get my glue out. So all I need to do is put some glue around the outside edge and again you don't need much and if you have anything like this where it squirts out on you a little too much you'll just wipe it up. So I'm going to place this. If you have some glue that is that is uh, squirting out, grab a piece of cardstock and just rub it around that inside edge and you'll find that it comes right off. Okay, so that looks beautiful to me. We're going to place that right there. So now I'm just going to add some glue and for sure behind this. That's all the glue you need. You don't need a whole bunch. 
and then we're just going to place it center right about there wherever you would like and that should grab fairly quickly for you this is what our album should look like isn't that gorgeous already we have an album uh, that is just uh, stunning okay let's open our album back up and we're going to work on this so let's grab our lace applique and we're going to apply glue and glue that down right like this so how I like to do this is first find the position and just start adding my glue to keep it in place and then once I get the base down I can go around the edges and get those on there if you'd like to use a little hot glue in the center you can um, because we will be putting something over that if you need help with getting this to allow this to dry give it about 10 minutes and then we're going to move on while our glue is drying, in your paper pack you will find this sheet. On the back, it's green. What we're going to do is, you see this circle right here with that beautiful butterfly? Let's just cut out and around this, get it out of this sheet, and then we're going to cut around the image. Okay, we'll put this in our reserves. And now we're just going to cut all the way around. If you have any scraps, put it in your reserves. So this is what mine looks like. Look in your reserves for a scratch piece, a scrap piece, a black cardstock. One that if you were to lay this down, you would be able to have some black around the edges. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to apply glue to the back of this and we're going to mount it. Okay making sure that we leave a little black uh, border up at the top. Make sure it's down really good. To make this easier for me, I'm going to cut this down. I'm going to stick that back in my reserves. Now all I'm going to do is, like I said, I'm going to cut out and around and leave about a sixteenth of an inch of black border around this image and I'm going to do mine and then I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what mine looks like. As you can see, you can see just a little bit of the black out and around. And my cutting is not perfect. So, okay. So we have this and what we're going to do is glue that down. I've got my glue on there and now I'm just going to center that right in the middle. And it may take a moment to grab down to the lace. If you need to use a little hot glue underneath to get yours to stay down, better go ahead. I do use a hot glue gun um, in this tutorial. Um, I didn't call out for it in the materials list. It's optional. But I do use it for quick tacking of flowers and um, folding over uh, flaps and whatnot. But this is a great time maybe to squirt a little bit under there to help just grab onto that Let's lace. Let's get into our drips. And again, there are three pairs in here. So we only need one pair. And what you're going to need is the flat one and then the hook part. For this. Alright. The flat one. This is the one that we actually glued down now and this glue is good for this with metal and I'm going to place some glue I'm not going to worry about if it uh, squirts out right now I can clean that up uh, if you have a binder clip grab it or some clamps all we're going to do is place that right on the side in the middle just like that now one thing is, is if you hold it down here this part so that it's overhanging. You can use this to make sure that you're not too far in. And if it goes in, you know you have it in the right spot. And I like using clamps, but uh, for those of you that don't have these, um, 
just using uh, binder clips is perfectly fine. Okay, this piece, we at the end of the tutorial, we will be installing this. So let's put that off to the side where we don't lose it. Wrap this out of reserves is the one where we cut out of it. What I want you to do is place this on your paper cutter and cut a straight uh, cut straight down here just on the other side so we can um, make sure that this is in a nice cut and then we're going to use this little leftover piece. I'll show you what mine looks like. So this is all we did. We could stick this in reserves. So this is a little trick here. Um, let's grab one of these out and we can use this on a next project. But what I want you to do is grab your scissors and cut a circle. One that is approximately the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect because my circles are not perfect. All we're looking to do is place to be able to glue this to the paper. It helps. Now if it's too big, it will hang out from the sides. And I'm going to cut this down just a little bit more. And again, this does not have to be perfect. This is just going to help us. Okay, place that down. Let's apply glue to it. And we're just going to place that right on top. So it looks like this on the back. Okay, let's let that dry. Set that off to the side. And we'll put this back in our reserves. I'm going to unclamp this. Now I'm going to, this is dry, I'm going to add glue to the back of this. It does help with grabbing onto the metal. However, in all my other tutorials, I did metal on metal and um, it stays perfectly fine. But some people are not using this glue, so I wanted to demonstrate another way to do it. So when you're placing this, make sure that when you place it down, you can still get your piece in comfortably. Okay, if you want to use your binder clip again or your clamp, just softly clamp down on that so that it stays. And I am going to prop my album up here. Alrighty, this is dry. So right now um, I am getting into the Seaside Blooms, the 49th and Market, and I've got it out of the package. And I'm going to split my album open so you can see what I'm doing. Inside here you will find this and this was actually wrapped around the bottom to keep it closed. So unwrap that and what we're going to do is glue this around the outside of that circle. So what I like to do is measure up what I need, give me just a little bit more just in case so that's what I'm going to do. And this is nice because it's already forming into a circle for me. So I think I need about that much and that'll give me a little extra so I can clip off at the end. <clears throat> I am going to use my hot glue for this. So if you have a hot glue gun, get it ready to go. This will make it much easier. Now be very careful not to get too much down. You don't need much you don't want it squirting out. So I'm going to start mine over here because I am going to layer something over it just in case so we don't see the seam. So I'm just going to work my way around here. I've got mine down and I clipped off the excess that is not needed. Let's first grab some of these leaves and I think the first one I'm going to lay right like this. So I'm going to apply some glue here to the back and I'm going to lay this down right like this and push it down up. Okay, the second one I'm going to do right like this. So let's apply our glue. Grab your next leaf and we'll do the same thing. Apply glue to the back and we'll bring that down right like this. If you have snips Let's snip off that wire and we're going to glue that down. Give that a moment to dry.
you will have some curly cues here. And all I'm going to do with this is kind of pinch it and twist it. And I'm going to cut off some of the excess. And I will use hot glue for this one. And I'm going to apply some hot glue right down here and lay that down in between. Let's grab one of our large flowers and I am going to use hot glue for this. And I'm going to place it right here. Okay, cut off of your lace about a three inch strip. And all we're going to do here is we're going to buckle it up a little just like this. What we're wanting to do here is we're going to just tuck some underneath here and have it out like this. So I'm going to use a little hot glue that will help me to pinch this a little and I will lift the leaves off this, add some glue to start. I'm going to put a dab right here to hold that down. Grab one of your pink flowers, let's dab a little bit of glue on the back and we're just going to place it right here. Let's get into our white flowers. I'm going to get into one of these, add a little hot glue, and I'm just going to stick it right there, right like that. Let's get into the smaller flower pack and grab a leaf. Let's apply a little glue, lift up the edges here and slide it back underneath there. We're going to do the same thing. Add a little bit of glue, lift up the leaves, and press it down against that lace. Grab one of your smaller ones, and what we're going to do is pinch the petals up. We'll dab a little bit of glue, lift these, and stick it right there. Okay, you should have another one of these. Let's snip off that wire. Let's add a little glue. Let's lift those leaves and just tuck that right like this. Okay. Grab a small flower and just slide that right there. I'm grabbing one of Valerie's butterflies. I'm going to apply glue to the back and I'm going to glue it down right here. Grab another small white flower and we're just going to put that right there. I'm grabbing one more of her butterflies and I'm going to apply a little glue to the back. And I'm going to add that right here. Okay, the cover is complete. Oops, I got something sticking on there. I almost forgot one thing. Grab a couple of your flat back pearls. Put one down here, and we're going to put one up there. Our cover is complete. Let's move on to page one. We are on page one, and we're going to get into our paper pack. In your paper pack, you will find this print on the back. It looks like this. The first cut we're going to make is we're going to measure over six inches and cut that right in the middle. We're going to double these up and now we're going to measure over eight inches and cut. What we're going to do here is these two we're going to set off to the side for our page two. Um, I'm not going to put these in my reserve because I'll be getting at them after I'm done with this and also I won't have to worry about accidentally uh, getting at them and cutting into them. So this is going to set off to the side, page two. And these two are going to be for our page one. Let's just set these off to the side. We're going to make a pocket. Cut a piece of cardstock that is four and one sixteenth inch by seven and a half inches. Now, for those of you that want to trim punch or die cut your pieces, here's the easiest way I recommend that you do this through this tutorial to make sure that you have enough room. So say this is the piece of cardstock that we just cut for our pocket. 
in the scene before this. Now what you can do is grab a separate piece of cardstock and die cut, leaving a one inch lip. Next what you can do is apply glue to this and mount it back behind. That way you are the same amount. Um, another way you can do is just by placing or punching or die plate and then measuring your decorated paper that we lay over that. Um, however, I do recommend doing it this way so that you can see if you're going to fit or what adjustments, whether you're using the one inch or a half inch. I hope that makes sense. What we're going to do is bring this on over once we got our piece cut. Let's get our score tape. Okay, so we got our score tape and what we're going to do is lay a piece at the bottom of our decorative paper and we want to make sure that that is down really good. So let's grab our tool and make sure it's down. Next, let's remove the backing. I like to give my pockets a little bit of a bend and I when I bring this down you will notice that it's actually wider than our page we want those uh, overhang on each side so I'm going to bring it down to the bottom of the page making sure I have overhang I'm gonna place it now I start in the middle here I press down and up okay grab that scratch piece of cardstock and run it to make sure that that score tape is down really good. Okay, next we're going to flip this over and we're just going to fold back these flaps back behind our page. And we just apply a little and there's our page. Okay, since we're not using, we can flip this over, since we're not using uh, fancy trim dies, Ours should fit, giving us a little bit of a black border at the top. Let's apply glue to the back of this and mount that, making sure our glue is down really good. Now, when applying glue, as you can see, I, I haven't smeared the whole thing. I just have a little bit of glue there. That is plenty. Pressing down around the edges. And there we have it, a nice pocket. Grab your lace, and I am using this one, and we are going to trim a piece that fits across. Let's apply glue and glue that down. And if you have any overhang, if you miss, uh, you miss uh, measured, just trim that off. Grab your bling, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to measure a piece to fit across. And we're going to glue that down. And we're going to give it a moment to dry, our glue to dry. Okay, grab a couple of your leaves from your white flower pack. And we're just going to place these like so. Grab your other curly cue, and we are going to cut these down. And we will apply a little glue here. Let's grab a pink flower, place that right here. Grab one of your flat back pearls, and we're going to put that right in the center there. Now I am in the Valerie's Butterflies. This is the one with the multicolored center, and I'm just going to stick that right here. I'm in the Tim Holtz crinkle ribbon and I've cut myself a piece here and I am just going to spend a moment rolling it around in the palm of my hand to crinkle that up really good. Then I'm going to make a bow out of it. I'm going to place a little glue here in the corner of that flower and glue that down. 
This page is complete. However, we're not going to mount this in our book until we're done with page two. And any of these leftover cuttings from the little uh, curly cues, just leave those because we may use those. Um, how I go about this in identifying um, pages, so in case you need to go back, is I do it like a book. Page one, page two, three, four, five, six, and so on. So this is actually our page one, which will be mounted in the book here. However, it's easier to mount page uh, two first so that we can line this up with how page two sets. So set this off to the side. Well, actually set your book off to the side. Flip that over. Let's add our score tape. Now we're going to put score tape around the outside like a picture frame one down the middle, and one on either side. So this is what yours should look like with the score tape on the back. Okay, let's set this off to the side. Page one is complete, and we're now on page two. We're on page two, and I had you set aside these two pieces. Okay, let's get into some black cardstock. Cut a piece of cardstock that is four and five eighths inch by six and one eighth inch. And that's where this ruler will come in handy for you to get that measurement. It'll tell you right on it where four and five eighths is on your cardstock. You can make a pencil mark and cut. Okay, let's get our scoring board out. We are four and five eighths inch across. At four and one eighth, we're going to score. And then at four and a quarter, we're going to score. And then we're going to fold on these score lines on both of them. Alrighty, I have my hinge off to the right here. You will have an inner score line and an outer one. On that inner one, pinch it so that that flap is completely back behind and all we're looking at is what we need to cover. This, place it down. If you were to place it in the center, you would have a black frame going around it. Apply glue and glue that down center. Okay, our flap, you can pull that out. It's off to the right. Let's just rotate that. The flap is now to the left. In your reserves, you will find this piece. On the back, it's pink. This is about six and a quarter inch by three and three quarters inch. Alrighty, looking at it like this, let's measure over five and three quarters of an inch and cut. So what you have here if you were to place it down, you should have a nice black border around this. Now one thing you're going to steer clear of is that inner score line. So you will have a good oh, 3 sixteenths or an eighth of an inch to be away from that. Before we glue this down, we want to make sure we place one of the magnets. Grab one of your magnets and we're going to center, uh, bring this center here, but you'll move in about a quarter of an inch in from the side. And we will just place our magnet. Now let's apply glue to this and glue it down. We're not ready to attach the mate yet, so right now all we're going to do is set this off to the side with our base page. Cut a piece of cardstock that is five and a half inches by seven inches. And then let's get our scoreboard out. We are five and a half inches across. At four and three quarters of an inch, we're going to score. And then at four and seven eighths, we are going to score. All right, let's fold on those score lines. All right, our flap should be off to the right. You have an outer score line and an inner score line. On that inner one, let's just pinch this to tuck that flap back behind. And remember, it's tucked back behind on the right side. In your paper pack, 
you will find this sheet on the back. It is green. So we're going to look at this to where the writing is the right way. We're going to measure over four and a half inches and cut. Stick the larger piece in your reserves. Let's turn it. Okay, let's flip this over. The larger piece goes in our reserves. Now I'm going to turn this around to where the little postcard is off to the right. We're going to measure over six and three quarters of an inch and this cut. This piece goes in our reserves for now. Let's flip this over and make sure that this is going to fit. So when you place this down, you should have a black border all the way around, okay? We can't glue this down yet because we actually need to get the mate to the other magnet. So grab your base sheet and let's install this fold out and we're going to be centering it. So remember, your flaps are off to the right. You have an inner score and an outer score line. On the outer score line, let's pinch it. Okay, and you will be able to see your other one. We're going to place this center top and bottom and the flap is off to the back. Pinch and hold it, lay it down, put pressure with your thumb down so it does not slide. I'm going to use hot glue and I'm going to glue this down. Now be careful not to add, if you're doing hot glue, to stay away from the inner edge because what can happen if you put too much, it will seep out into the seam here of the hinge. Okay, so now that you have this on, we are just going to move that back so you should be able to run your finger and it should be flat on the side. Okay. Alrighty, now this is the part where we're going to grab the mate, okay? You're going to stick it right there. What I want you to do is grab your glue and put a small dot just in the center, okay? Now, when you have this, remember our flap is off to the right, I want you to pull that flap back so that you can feel that it's straight on the edge. See? I want you to center this. Be careful not to push this down yet because of the glue. I want you to center this top, bottom, okay? Press and lift. That is where the mate is going to be and you will be able to see that. So let's place that. Let's apply glue to this and glue that down. We're going to make sure that this is in the right position of where we place that. So that should actually go right on top. But first, you see over here on the flap, pull out your flap. Let's grab some score tape. On the outside edge, we're going to lay a piece of score tape, and you will have just enough to lay one piece without interfering with the score lines. If you have any score tape peeking over the edge, trim it. Okay? So this is an easy way to get this placed when we are doing something like this. Okay, I'm going to remove the backing. I'm going to bring this back so that it is, once again, when I put my finger down, it is like this. Place this part down first to where it finds that. And you can tell over here if you are straight. And once you have that, you can now place that side down. Okay? Now, pull this up and run your finger there. Let's open that up and find a piece to lay over the black. Grab your half inch thin flat lace and we are just going to cut a piece to fit. Now when you're doing this make sure that you are away from that score line. So for me I'm just going to put a little glue right down that black strip 
and then I'm going to lay my lace, making sure I'm not on that score line. So I'm going to leave this open for that glue to dry, and then once this dries, I'm going to flip this open so I can finish up my page. Alrighty, mine is completely dry, and how I know is I can press my finger on here and I don't feel anything sticky. Let's get for in here. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet. It's a gray flower print. On the back, you'll find the large gray, larger flower print. Measure over four and a half inches and cut. Stick the larger piece in your reserves. Measure over six and three quarters inch and cut. Stick the smaller piece in your reserves. Let's set this off to the side. In your reserves, you will find a small square piece like this. On the back, it looks like this. It should be about the same size width as the piece we just cut. Once you find that, let's set these off to the side. Cut a piece of cardstock that is 3 and 13 sixteenths by 5 and a half. And this is where the ruler is going to help you. Flip it over to where you see all the small things, all the small marks, and you can see exactly where 3 and 13 sixteenths is. Alrighty. Once you have that, grab this piece out and let's grab our score tape. We're going to make a little pocket. Place your score tape at the bottom of your gray sheet here. Use your scoring tool or your nail to make sure that that is down really good. Let's remove the backing. We're going to make another pocket, give a bend. We'll bring this down, making sure that we have overhang on each side. And remember, start down in the middle and push out. Grab your bone folder, your scoring tool, your scratch piece of cardstock, and make sure that that score tape is down really good. Now all we have to do is what we've done before. Fold those flaps back behind our page and adhere them down. Alrighty, so let's look at this piece and make sure the writing is right side. And we're going to apply glue and glue that down, giving us a black border at the top. Alrighty, it is time to apply glue to the back of this and mount this so that you have a black border top, bottom, and the side. Now remember, steer clear of that inner score line because you don't want to interfere with the hinge. So leave about one eighth of an inch in from that score line. Make sure you press that. Make sure the glue is down really good. Let's do something to this page now. In your reserves, you will find this where it's a little postcard with the butterfly. On the back, it's this. We're going to put this on our uh, paper cutter and just divide this from that. And I'll show you mine. So this is what you should have. Stick this in reserves. And now what we're going to do is we are going to cut out and around this little postcard. So this is what you should have. Now look in your reserves for a scratch piece of cardstock that if you were to lay this down, it clears and gives you um, enough on the sides where you can still see the black. Let's apply glue and glue that down. The next thing that we want to do is cut around this piece, leaving just a little bit of black showing around the edge of this postcard. And I'll show you what mine looks like. Here is mine, and you can see I just have a little bit of black to outline that. Okay, let's set this off to the side. In your reserves, you will find this sheet. On the back, it is green. We're going to put this on our paper cutter, and we are going to cut 
straight down. And I'll show you what mine looks like. Just like that. We'll put this back in our reserves. And now what we're going to do is cut out the envelope. Put your leftover pieces in your reserves. Look in your reserves for a scratch piece of cardstock that we can lay this down on and do the same thing. We're going to apply glue to the back of this. We're going to glue it down and then we are going to cut out and around just leaving a little bit of black showing as a border. So let's do that. So this is what you should have. What we're going to do is apply a little glue to the back side here. Now grab this because lay this down right like this and leave yourself about an eighth of an inch in from this side. This one we are going to lay at an angle like so. Now what we're looking to do is make sure that we clear the side of our page so we don't want to go too far over. So I'm just going to bring it down to where I can just see the uh, the writing at the top and I'm going to place this. So that's our beginning point here. Okay, so now I know this is going to fit. We're going to flip this over and on your straight edge here we're going to put a very thin line of glue at the edge. We're also going to go across the bottom. Okay, and we're going to go to the side. Now one thing is, is fold this back a little so you can see underneath. And we're going to put a thin line of glue there. Okay, so now let's give that a little bit of a bend and place this. Okay, that's all we need to do there, making sure that this is down. So now what we have is a small little pocket here and right here. Let's close that up. Grab some of your leftover curly cues and up in the corner here on our flap we're going to apply a little glue like so. Grab a leaf, let's apply a little glue making sure we do not get glue on our other piece. I've got a white flower and I'm going to stick it right there. Grab a pink butterfly and I'm going to stick it right here. Alrighty, this page is complete and if you look side by side these look absolutely beautiful. Let's flip that over, apply score tape around the outside edges like a picture frame, one down the middle and one on either side. And then we're going to mount this in our so book. This is what your score tape should look like. Let's grab our book and I'm going to show you before removing my score tape what we're going to do. Let's open up this book. This belongs to page two. So this is the easiest way I can tell you. Look in your reserves for this sheet. Slide it back behind page two. All this does is help us see where the edge of our black page is. Now, when I remove the score tape, I am going to mount this to where I am at least an eighth of an inch in from that hinge line. And then it will be centered top to bottom. Okay, so it's going to be ending up looking like this. So let's do this together. Let's remove the backing. I got the backing off. Now one thing about score tape is it is not forgiving. So I recommend starting on the inside placement so that you can actually see. Now when I do this I'm going to be looking top to bottom to make sure I have that 1 8 inch bottom border. So I'm looking here 1 8 inch in, about an eighth of an inch in from the top. Once I see I have that I'm going to press and let my page fall. Now once you do that it's very important to open up your page 
and smooth that score tape down really good. Okay, I can remove this. Now, if you get yours on a little bit crooked, it's okay. Chances are nobody is going to see that. So the reason why we plant this first is if you notice, our covers are bigger than our inner pages. And I find that it's just easier to mount this to line it up with the second page after the second page is put down. All the other pages, you don't need to do that. So this one, when I place it, is going to be centered. It is far enough away from that hinge and I'm going to be even with the top and the bottom. So we'll place this together. Let's remove the score tape backing. Got the backing off and again I'm going to center this but I'm going to be looking top to bottom making sure I'm in far enough from that hinge and I'm going to try and line that up with the top and the bottom of page two. So I think I'm good right here and if you don't get it exact that's okay. So right there, I think I'll be okay. So again, you want to make sure that you smooth it down really good. Another thing about bling is you definitely want to be far enough away from that hinge with the bling. Alrighty, this is what we have. And now we are on to page three.